So let's talk about what to do when people don't believe in your dreams. All right, so imagine this. Let's pretend there was a young lady out in the world who had dreams of becoming a successful real estate investor just like her mom. But instead of wanting to wait 30, 40, 50 years to become a successful real estate investor, let's assume this young lady wanted to instantly, or pretty close to instantly, become a successful real estate investor. So let's say this lady in our story decided that instead of saving up her money or going to the bank and putting 20% down, let's say that she found out there was another way to invest in houses. And she went to classes, she went to seminars, she went to boot camps, she went to workshops, she went to all sorts of different things to find out how to get these real estate deals done. And once she was convinced that she could do these deals, that's when the negativity started. See, it was all fun and games while she was just learning, while she was just talking. But learning and talking to our girl meant dreaming, scheming, and planning also. Our girl is an action taker. When she goes to these seminars and these boot camps and these workshops, she's not just learning. She's also figuring out how this puzzle works towards her future. And at one particular workshop, seminar, boot camp, weekend away to learn about real estate investing. She makes an exclamation to everybody she knows and loves that in a year, she's going to own 10 houses. Now, this story can go two different ways at this point. Either she can go on and in the next year, buy 10 houses, make a bunch of money, be super duper successful, and have her confidence improved in spite of nobody believing her dreams. Or second way, people can tell her that it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna be as lucrative as she thinks it's gonna be, and she can say, yeah, you're right, it was, it was a dumb idea. She can stuff her dreams back in her bra, in her heart, in her head and she can just continue down life the way it was going. So now if you've heard this story or you know this story, tell me which way you hope our girl decides to go. Tell me right now. Drop me a comment. Leave it down below. Tell me. Do you hope she tells everybody to shut up and sit down or do you hope our girl shuts up and sits down herself? This is a pretty obvious one, isn't it? In this movie, in this story, we are all cheering and screaming and jumping up and down for her to choose number one. Chase your dreams, chase your goals, chase your wild ideas and your crazy ambition. Do it to it, baby. Nobody wants to watch a story where the main character just sits down and shuts up. Do you? No, you don't. I know you don't. You know you don't. I mean, we're all supposed to be the leading lady in our own story, right? Y'all saw the holiday. You got to stand up and be strong for yourself. You got to stand up and follow your dreams. And I got to tell you, in this story, that girl was me. I had a choice. My boyfriend told me that I had church camp mentality. He told me I was at this seminar, I was at this boot camp, they were filling my head full of all these crazy ideas and notions, and it wouldn't work when I got home. My mom said, are you sure you can do this this way? Like, I don't think you should do this. I think you should just, you know, slow your roll, curb your ambition a little bit, and, you know, eventually things will land in your lap. My dad was like, look, if you'll just shut up and ride this, in 50 or 60 years, you'll be able to inherit all these rental houses that we have. You'll be able to inherit this business. I went for weeks and months at a time feeling like I was completely crazy, 
feeling like I was completely alone, feeling like I was trying to climb Mount Everest in flip-flops and shorts. I felt like nobody was on my side. They all loved me, but they weren't cheering for me. Sometimes they even felt like they were cheering against me, like they were hoping that I would, you know, get out there and try it out a little bit and I'd get my feelings hurt and I'd say, you know what, I quit. I'm just going to stay safe. I'm just going to stay small. I'm just going to stay the way you want me to be. But all of that, it just made me more determined to get out there and tackle it and get it done. I think it had the opposite reaction to what all of them wanted it to have. And I knew that when times got tough, and they did, they still do. I still have bad days. I still cry in the shower sometimes. I still want to slap them silly sometimes with some negativity that comes out of their mouth. But I still use it as fuel because I realized that I wasn't scared to get my feelings hurt. I wasn't scared to fail because I don't believe in failure. I believe in lessons. I wasn't scared to hear no, even though I hate that word, like more than anything in the word world. I hate to hear no, but I wasn't scared to hear no because I knew that the more I heard no, the closer I was getting to a yes. I knew that the more I suffered, the more I struggled, the more return was going to be on the other side. I knew that you know, life isn't happening to me. Life was happening for me. I had this unshakable faith that everything was going to turn out wonderful and that I was going to be able to open up this whole new world, not just for me, but for my boyfriend, because he was very corporate and in the box and straight laced and black and white and nothing exotic or weird. I knew that I was going to be able to help my parents because I knew that if I learned how to invest this way, I was going to be able to help them invest this way. So their portfolio, which was good, but it could double, it could triple. I knew that I could help them once I got some practice. Once I figured this out with strangers, then I'd be able to help my family. The first time I closed a deal, I was so excited. I didn't think I would sleep for three days. I was so excited because I had gotten it done. I got a shut up check. And let me tell you, a shut up check, sometimes you get shut up checks for the rest of your life. But I got shut up checks for that very first year. I had to shut up my boyfriend and showing that I wasn't a loser. I didn't have church, man, church camp mentality. I could do this. I had to shut up my mom to show her that it was legal. And that it was profitable and that I was going to be really good at it. I had to shut up my dad to show him that I may be young, but I'm not dumb. I had to show him that I didn't need to wait 50 or 60 years to make a big splash out in this old world. I got those shut up checks for them because I didn't really have any fears in my head. And maybe it's because I'm a millennial and I've always been told that I could do anything I wanted to. But I didn't have those fears saying I couldn't do it in my head. I had people in my life telling me I couldn't do it. And to this day, y'all, to this day, I've been, I've done like 70 some odd deals, real estate deals. I've got apartments. I've got land. I've got houses. I help women all over the country get their deals done the same way that I've gotten my deals done just by pure grit, determination, little bit of lady luck and street smarts, horse sense. I got not really common sense. I got horse sense. All right. I got a good redneck thinker on my shoulders here. And to this day, my parents don't know what I do, how I buy houses, why I have so many of them and how I make money. They understand when I say I help women get my deal, get, get deals done the same way that I've gotten deals done. Like they can understand that. They feel like I'm a consultant. That makes sense in their head. But the way these women and I get these deals done, it blows my parents' head. It, they just can't comprehend it. They don't understand it. it. 
it does not make sense to them. They see it working. They see the money. They see the success. It just doesn't, whatever. They're proud of me, but y'all can ask them today. Do you know how Whitney buys houses? They're like, nope. Just know that she does. And I've been doing it long enough now that they know it's not illegal. <laughs> My parents have always supported me. They've always loved me. They've always been behind me. My boyfriend, who is now my husband, loves me. He supports me. He's my biggest cheerleader. But when they were spitting that fear out, when they were spitting those excuses out, they were spitting this negativity out at me, especially in the beginning, especially in the beginning. And a couple different times sprinkled in just for fun. When I was ready to up level again, or I was ready to go into a different thing, or I was ready to, you know, grow, I'd get a little bit of pushback and negativity. Not a whole lot, not like in the beginning, because I'd gotten those shut up checks and they knew that when I said I was going to do something, they could either get out of my way or get out of my way because I was going to get it done. Right. But now they're absolutely my biggest fans because they know when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Whether they like it or not, whether it makes them uncomfortable or not. It doesn't make me uncomfortable. I ain't scared. Let's do it. I don't care to make a fool out of myself. I don't care to fail. I don't care to still hear a no or to say, you know, that's a crazy idea. But I think it'll work. When you hear negativity, whether you're hearing it from your family, your friends, your coworkers, your whatever, even if you don't have that fear, if you don't have that in your head, when you hear it from other people and then it comes into your head, you're like, oh, should I be afraid of that? Oh, am I going crazy? Oh, maybe I should. Stop it. I have faith in you. I know you can get these deals done. When you start getting those shut up checks, when your friends and family start seeing that you're not just full of it and that you're helping people out in the community. You're helping sellers get rid of their houses. You're helping people get into houses that otherwise wouldn't. You're making money, real money, not illegal side money. That's when it all really starts to spin around. And sometimes you're going to have to have some hard conversations. I remember flat out telling my dad that I didn't want to talk about this. I wasn't going to wait. I was going to go out into this big old world and I was going to get my slice of this pie. There was plenty of money out there. I didn't need to wait 50 or 60 years to get my little piece. I was going to go get it now. I remember telling my boyfriend that he wasn't going to stop me. I was willing to put in blood, sweat, and tears to make sure that this thing got off the ground and I was able to live the life that I'd always wanted. Sometimes it's going to take some hard conversations. You're going to have to have strength inside you. You're going to have to have a strong self-talk up here all day, every day, because sometimes strangers will say the darndest things to you and it'll feel like they slapped you. They didn't mean to. They were really talking about themselves and their shortcomings. They were probably trying to give you a compliment. It was just a backhanded compliment. People do that to me all the time. They'll say, gosh, I don't know how you're a landlord. That sounds like a lot of work. I'm not cut out for that, which could be taken as you are stupid for being a landlord. Why would you put yourself through that? But I don't take it that way. I take it as you're going to be a lot richer than I am, a lot longer than I am, and a lot sooner than I am because I'm not willing to put in the work now to have money later. See, that's what it is to be a landlord. Landlord even isn't very glamorous, y'all. It's hard. You're going to have to have some confrontational conversations. You're going to have to be really strong in yourself. You're going to have to have some strong rules, some ground rules, some core values. And you're going to have to stick up for yourself when nobody else will. But the reward is so much greater than the risk. I'm 33. I've been retired from corporate America for two years now. I've been working for myself for three years, two years totally by myself. The people that told me they couldn't be a landlord, they're going to have to work until they're 75. 
because they're not setting up any passive income, because they're not setting up any big goals for themselves, because they're not thinking about the long term. They're thinking, oh, I don't want to answer the phone. Mm. Answer the phone. It's not going to kill you. Have hard conversations with your parents. Have hard conversations with your boss. Have hard conversations with your boyfriend or your husband. Go ahead. Let them know what your dreams are. Let them know what your goals are. And let them know that you're going to do it. And they can either support you and be close by and get the inside view on what's going on. Or, or they can support you from the outside and not know what's going on. And as scared as they may be for you, they love you dearly. And they will all, when it comes to push to shove, they will all choose to take the inside path with you. My parents love to help me with a project. I sent my dad on a crazy goose chase just this week looking for cabinet doors. My husband still doesn't really like houses, but he found a love in apartments. And anytime I got a project going on at the apartments or I got a crazy idea, like right now we're turning one of our apartments into an Airbnb or a corporate rental, he's totally on board. And one reason he's totally on board is because he knows when I decide I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it and he can either be on board or he can get the cold shoulder for the next month. <laughs> We've lived through this a couple different times and he's starting to make good choices now, y'all. <laughs> he's starting to get on board with my crazy ideas because my crazy ideas come from my greatest source of strength, which is myself. And every time I've followed my crazy ideas and my crazy dreams and my big dreams and my big ideas, it's been a roller coaster. It's been up, it's been down, it's been up, it's been down, but it's been more up than it has been down. And so far, every lesson, every failure, every no, every down, every valley that I've gone through has resulted in a higher high, in more money, in more resources, in more opportunities. Keep going, ladies. You've got the negativity coming at you hard, push back with positive energy even harder. I talk to myself out loud. I'm not afraid to tell you, tell you. I just jabber to myself all the time because my brain is kind of like a loud bar. Y'all ever been in a loud bar? It's just like all the time, all the time, all the time, right? That's how my brain is. It's always like a loud bar. I can't stand to be in loud places anymore. Like I've just realized in the last like three, four, five months, like I cannot stand being anywhere where it's loud because it's already so loud in my head. I'm having three or four conversations in my head all the time that I can't stand to actually be anywhere where it's loud. And a lot of women are like that. I've got so many ideas. I got so many conversations. I'm having a conversation with a girl, you know, in college. I've been out of college for like 10 years now. That conversation is done, okay? But I'm still having that conversation in my head. I'm still having anxiety about all of these other things that I got going on, but I'm making plans. I'm seeing the future. I'm envisioning the future. And so I talk out loud to myself because every once in a while, one of those bad thoughts one of those, oh my gosh, one of those mistakes, one of those, oh, you should have done that, or oh, you should have done that totally different. It comes in and I have to say, no, 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 no. We're not dealing with that thing again. No, 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 no. I'm not dealing with that fear today. Not today, Satan. Get out of my head. I talk to myself all the time. I will. I'll say, you know what? You're really living this. You are really doing this. You are really taking this action. You are really buying these houses. You are really helping these sellers. I talk to myself all the time. I have to. The more I say things out loud, the more they come true. The more I dwell and have silent conversations in my head, the lower and lower and lower I sink. So when people are giving you their negativity and their fears, you have to confront it. 
no, no, no. I feel like uh, Wonder Woman. I've got those bands on my arms. I'm like, pow, 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 pow. Bouncing the negativ negativity back to people. A girlfriend of mine told me in August that I had unrealistic expectations and that one of my goals would never happen. I told her that I did not have unrealistic expectations and my goals were most definitely going to happen and they did happen by the end of September. Exactly what I told her was going to happen, but it's because I talked to myself all day, every day, in the car, in the shower, all the time. My, you know, my mom is used to me talking to myself. She knows I'm having 18 different conversations in my head and sometimes it falls out out loud. My husband too. We're riding down the road, totally silent. I'm, and then I start talking out loud and I solve problems that way. I get past my fears that way. I get past the negative voices outside my head and in my head by telling them to shut up and go away and to focus more on my goals and dreams. Yes, people think I'm crazy. Whatever, I'm a woman. It's just the different levels of crazy every once in a while, right? Speak out loud. Tell your fears to shut up and sit down. They don't belong in your future. If your people are giving you negativity, tell them to shut up and sit down or they won't be in your future. It's a hard conversation, but I'm telling you, once they realize that you're determined, once they realize that you're convinced, they will shut up, they will sit down, they will hope and pray that you end up on your feet or they will leave. If they leave, bye. If they leave, they weren't going to do anything but drag you down anyway. If they leave, don't even worry about it. They'll either be back or somebody will fill their place. I believe in you. So get out there and let's get these deals done. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. You can go to WhitneyNicely.com. If you have any questions, if your people are giving you all sorts of negativity, just let, just make sure you understand that that's them talking about their own fears and insecurities or that you are making them uncomfortable, but don't let it affect you and your drive, your ambition, your goals, and your dreams. This is your life, not theirs. The right ones will stick around.